it's a, it's we need to urge some uh, like the FA in order to, pre to to bring us some better referees because the referees are very weak for two teams. I'm not talking about my team only. For the two teams, the, whoever shouts takes the ball, whoever whistles takes the ball. They don't have a good personality. They need because Egypt and Nigeria are well known and very well known in in the football in African football. They one of the top and biggest two countries in football, they need to bring some good referees in order to referee such an event. They can't just bring a first-time referee because it's just under 17. No, they need to have better referees in order for the matches to come with a better result for both teams. That, that's my opinion, but I want to congratulate the Nigerian team today for their performance, and I want to tell them waiting for you in Cairo. Everything is possible. Uh, anything it can happen, like anything, I don't, yani, nothing is impossible in football. All the players turned around many results and it's not about the result, it's about the performance and showing the world that Egypt has a very good team, a promising team that can compete in uh, under 20 and the uh, first team as well. I just have to say thank you to all my team in Nigeria, the millions of Nigeria, who the ones that comes around to come around and those ones sitting back at two. Uh, a big congratulation to Nigeria as well. You know the situation that we are in the country. And I promise my friend Nigeria that I'm going to put smile on your face. Thank you for able to do that. Even though they wanted to come like that, but I think we have to say good news and kudos to the girls because they give all their best. Remember this year our opponent, they wanted to fight uh, the same but they wanted to go the way with the draw, but we will not give up on that. We want to fight them on it. Get the goal score and we did that and we scored the goal with Tango. It's not easy to create chance, not to talk of even scoring. If they've created this kind of chance and they are able to score four goals, <laughs> for quite a while, it's not easy. But not enough to say that they cannot score more than that. We're taking it gradually. You know, we're just grooming these girls. They're just coming up, they're upcoming. They're in the part of the developmental program. They're not the finished motor yet, but just as we're progressing. You see, the game we play today is far better than what to play against school. And these are still our position. We know that the, uh, the more the, uh, the more we go, the stronger it becomes. So we know that. So we're taking it little by little, gradually. Good one coming from our ladies there, the under 17 team called Flamingos of Nigeria, the walloped Egyptian team 4 0 just yesterday at the MKR Biola Stadium, at least standing one of their feet uh, in the qualifier as well. They played the first leg now, they won 4 0, and the second leg will be coming up uh, over there in Cairo, Egypt, precisely. Using that, we we'll welcome you on 360 Sport on Trust TV. I am Adini Achishafe. Well, lots of uh, activities that will quickly be running after running through uh, in the world of sport. We just have to quickly look at activities there with uh, a lot of stories but let's start with uh, talking to our guest uh, good to have you uh, Joel Ajayi in the studio and also Nii Busari good to have you good thank morning. you for the opportunity to be here good one there now we start with the shot you just saw there that's uh, our ladies under 17 what they did just yesterday uh, they really showed their class against Egypt that game uh, India 2022 uh, World Cup qualifiers, where Nigeria right now play the qualifiers, and we did well by winning our first legacy against Egypt. I don't think it's a surprise to somebody like us who have been following women football in Africa. When we are talking about women football in Africa, uh, Nigeria uh, will never be underestimated. Uh, the senior and uh, the junior category as well. Um, Egypt cannot be compared to Nigeria in terms of uh, the women football. And that is exactly what I've shown yesterday uh, in Abuja when we played the first leg in Nigeria with the hope of repeating, even if not the same, uh, and targeting the win uh, in Cairo in a week's time. And I believe uh, they are capable of doing so. Going by what they did yesterday, there was no much threat um, from the Egyptian player, no threat from them. And that has shown that uh, uh, definitely uh, they need to work very hard when they return to, uh, to Cairo to overturn the, uh, the 4-0, which is very, very difficult for them. Though, and the coach was talking tough yesterday, blaming the loss on the official, that uh, the officiating was bad, and that was what led to 4-0, which, of course, is an uh, is, is excuse from my own side, from my view, because Nigeria, right from the blast of the whistle, uh, they took on to, uh, to the opponent, make sure that uh, uh, they frustrate them to commit some blunder will lead to some of the goals over there. And I think uh, with that in mind, uh, Nigeria will definitely pick this one, going to the next land of the 
championship. Good one there. We've been looking at the uh, the ladies, what they did just yesterday. Uh, Joel Ajay, uh, that game, you just saw it down. Our ladies, uh, though we won that game 4 0, and the coach said, well, there are still some uh, skirmishes where they need to walk on. Do you agree with that? Uh, I think uh, it's a very good, good game for Nigeria. And then, uh, like coach said, there is no game that is perfect, even in Champions League, even in EPL. When you play a game, you try as much as possible to look at all those uh, lapses that you committed in the previous game, and then you work against it for uh, the next game. But what I just want to say is that 4-0 uh, is a very good uh, result for us as a nation. But uh, like my, my brother used, uh, said it here, uh, we need hard work because uh, in football, anything can happen. No matter how giant we are in terms of uh, women football, we need to do our homework very well, go to Cairo, even if you are going to concede, concede less than four or play a draw. If possible, you can even beat, uh, them. beat them and be, uh, be at safer side because you are still meeting uh, either South Africa and uh, Ethiopia. Though uh, South Africa, I, I think they are tactically hard because Ethiopia went to their home yesterday and beat them 3-0. Mm -hmm. And then it will be very difficult for, for me, oh, but in football anything can happen. It might be difficult for them to go back to Ethiopia and, and, and obtain that particular result. So just go to Egypt, do your homework, put a lot of, a, a lot of energy, a lot of strength, a lot of ta tactic for you to make sure that uh, you are on top of the, of the situation. Now, if you watch that particular game, uh, just uh, the performance of the Egyptian might not be too, uh, like, let's say 100%, but that's this number 10 and number 9 of their players that really did so well. And you look at the antics of their coaching crew, they, they, were, they, were, they, they kept coming to the pitch, walking in, and making it look as if it wasn't a, uh, a qualifier. And people were like, by the time they get to Egypt, what will happen if they are doing like this here in Nigeria? Like I said, uh, you, you have a four goals in your basket. All you need to do is to look at, that's why we, we, when we are talking about uh, technical crew, we should have people on the bench that will be watching all these points that you are, you, you are raising. Mm. You look at it, how we are going to tame all these people when we, when we, went, when we reach uh, Cairo. That is what you're supposed to do. But for me, with that 4 zero, you need to try as much as possible to look at the politics outside the, 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 the pit, uh, the feed, and make sure that those things that you saw while you are in Abuja, you walk uh, over it and make sure that it will not repeat itself. Even if it repeats, the worst, they are going to have a little bit of uh, uh, home, uh, home advantage in Cairo. Mm -hmm. But when you have a four goal, you play your goal in first half, when you did not concede in first half, the pressure will be on the home team. Before you know, 90 minutes will clock. And then you you, you are as, as well as qualify for the for the India. So for me, you need to work on all those lapses you are seeing, and then things we just uh, work get better. With. Good one there. We've been talking concerning the uh, Flamingo performance just yesterday at the stadium, as they were able to win that game four 0 against Egypt. Well, we'll be going to Cairo. Hopefully, our ladies will do us proud. According to what Coach Bankole said there, that he will work on the ladies. Although the team is actually getting better each game they play. Well, well, let's move away from the women football well, quickly. We talk about the NNL, Nigerian National League, the second tier of our league, as we start with Group uh, A2 result there. Well, quickly, as we have uh, the result, GM Liberty, they actually play goalless. And the way the table is standing from Adamawa winning against DMD, 1-0, Kebi United 2, Malumfashi FC 1, Rose FC 3, Kogi United FC 0. And you have Doma United, they peeped NAF FC 1-0. Now they are topping the table uh, in Group A2, Northern Conference, by uh, having 17 points playing 10 matches, followed by Jigawa Golden Stars, Madun Fashi FC, DMD, Kebi United, you have Adamawa, Green Beret, Rose Safety, these are teams from Abuja, and you have Kogi United, JM Liberty, and you have NAV FC standing down the table there with nine points from 10 matches. This is not too good for NAV. Yes, uh, NAV FC, uh, uh, three seasons ago, um, mm. play qualifier, with the, the Gawa Golden Star to hand uh, a ticket to the MPFS. See them now at the rock bottom of the table. That is not a good one from Abuja. And I think uh, with my experience with the, the NNL, particularly teams in Abuja, they suffer some kind of uh, officiating. What do I mean? When a team comes to Abuja, they see the, 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 the pitch or the home ground of the home of the team mm. as a 50-50 affair. 
because the referee, based on the caliber of people that will be on the pitch to watch the game, will be fair and we like to write his name in gold. While they don't, the home team, NAV and some other team in Abuja, don't enjoy such when they travel on our way. We have seen many things. I've traveled with many teams in the NNL, and I've seen many things, many officiating, that you cannot even record because of the irate fans. You can't bring out your phone to pick all this uh, scene. So if, at, and what has been happening is that the team will come from our way, pick point in Abuja, but it's very difficult for Abuja team to go away and even pick a draw. Mm. Anything that is not even close to free kick outside the box of 18 or penalty will be awarded, have been awarded at the diamond. Minute. These are some of the things they are paying for. However, they need to boost, beef up their team, get some player who are experienced or better still, if they want to gain um, promotion to the MPFL, which of course is not most of this uh, club uh, uh, dream because most of the club are owned by either Nigeria Air Force or EFCC or so the, it is not owned by an individual or government in some like um, in vendor insurance of this world who is owned by state who has a lot of fun to spray around for player to settle all whatever debt or player salary, which of course is serve as an encouragement for them to perform well. We have seen in this situation where players are whole two, three months, and that is not encourage it's not encouraging for you enough for player to go onto the pitch and say, Yes, today I must die here to hand the three point. So mm. these are some of the things that have been affecting now the Abuja team. Not only now five C, all the almost all the Abuja team have been suffering from this, except the citizen, the city FC, who just come who is uh, the team that is just an uh, uh, a, a private club in FCT, and you can see it's maintaining top of the table because that is exactly what we are preaching. When teams are not handed to professionals, these are the things you read from them. Good one there. We've been looking at the Nigerian National League. Quickly, let's look at Group B2, uh, B1 rather, the results that actually happened during the weekend where Adoration FC defeated Bender Insurance by a long goal. And you have uh, J. Atete 1 against Abel Kutas Thomas. Campus FC, it was a 1-1 uh, draw against Ikorodu City. Van Dresa also 1-0 draw against Giant Brailers. Ekiti United defeated Gateway FC by two goals to one. Looking at the table now, Gateway are topping the table with 22 points, playing 11 matches. For Followed by Bender Insurance of Benin. They are second on the log. Ibom Youth, Adoration FC, Ekiti United in that pecking order. Down the bottom of the table is Osho United in the red button. Uh, you have J. Atete and Campos FC. Those are the three teams that seem to be ready for relegation so far. They are not really doing so well. And if we go to B2, looking at Group B2 now, the result and also the table, go around FC are uh, topping uh, the group there. Well, from the way it is, Otasolo play one order against Rovers FC. Ijebu United won nil against Crown FC of Obomosho. Abia Comet lost against Central FC. Uh, Sporting Lagos uh, peeped by Osa United by, uh, by a long goal. Worry Wolves won. FC won Rocket won. And the table is standing in favor of Go Round FC, who are topping with 18 points from 11 matches. Worry Wolves are second, followed by Sporting Lagos, Rovers FC, Inewi United, Ijebu United, down straight to Apex Crane. Abia Comet and Sinoshaw FC. You look at this particular table also, you'll be wondering how come Go Round FC, Worry Wolves, uh, most experienced teams are there. Sporting Lagos are really shocking uh, a lot of teams. They are new, but they are really doing well. Joel. Honestly, I'm, I'm impressed with mm. uh, what uh, is going on in the uh, NLL in, uh, in Nigeria. Like, like we said, you know, times without number, anytime I come to this place, I used to, I used to say this, that... Uh, if we are too serious, if we want development, if we want growth of our football, I think it is high time that we need to come to a round table and ensure that most of our club are not in the hand of politicians, but in the hand of professionals. Like my uh, colleague said here, when you put uh, uh, the affairs of football in the hand of professionals, there is no how you are not going to get the result. Look at uh, the, the sporting in, uh, in Lagos. They are doing well because it's private own uh, uh, club, and then they will make sure that they want to see value for their money. Unlike uh, some some situation, some states that they have that money, but because they lack professional that will handle that particular mm -hmm. club, the money is, go is just going to somewhere else instead of you to channel the the resources towards the development and growth of the club. And then for me, I think. Uh, 
Uh, it is an appeal to many Nigerians that God has blessed with money. Just look at a particular uh, uh, town, maybe the, a town you, you, you came from. Just uh, float a club. Before you know, you will be employing people into that particular game. And then people will make it. If Fortunately, at the end of the day, those people that are playing in this uh, league now, they might see all these uh, scouts from abroad. Before you know, they will be a breadwinner of their family, both the extended and uh, the family, the, the, the family yeah, that, the are close, family. Uh, that are close good to them. There. It's a very good one. Good one out there. Joel Ajayi and Ni Busari, they've been doing wonderfully well, talking about the analysis of sports, the sporting story we've been taking so far. We talked about the uh, Flamingos, not forgetting the NNL, Nigeria National League. But let's uh, go to the MPFL. Well, uh, let's look at the result of the games that were played. March day 23, matches were played. Gombe United won, Aqua United won. Uh, well, Shooting Stars did well against Low B Stars. Uh, that's a good one for them. Kano Pillars, well, that game we are coming there. Enugu Rangers against Sunshine Stars and their goalers, Abia Warriors, also Niger Tanados, also ended 1 0 draw. Uh, for this weekend, most matches ended in a draw. Wiki Torres, Jakarta won their game. Nasarawa won one against Raymond Stars, while Platzi United defeated MFM. Well, those are the results. Now, if you look at the way the table is standing, despite the fact that Rivers are yet to play, they are there topping the league with 49 points. Uh, they have a game at hand to play. You have Platzi United. 48, they close the gap just a point. While you have Rangers with 38 points, Raymond Stars in fourth position, Quara United, and you have uh, Sunshine Stars. If you look at this table from the way it is, uh, well, we are coming to Candopilla story, the next story we are going to look at. But from the way it is, Rivers United this season, they've been very fantastic. Yes, um, Rivers have a, a very formidable team. Don't forget they represented Nigeria in the CAF Confederation Cup, which of course, assist them in building up the team. And of course, uh, they are from a, 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 a state that have enough uh, money. And mm -hmm. the governor, don't forget, has already spread out the money uh, on the team. The coach in particular has is up, happened to be one of the most experienced coaches in Nigeria. He has been there for like more than 10 years. And you can imagine the kind of experience he has. And he have the money to spray around in terms of player, gathering the best of leg, giving them the encouragement in terms of payment as at when they in, in their salary. And these are the things that have been working for them. With the way this thing is going, I, I want to believe that they are capable of lifting the title this season. And with that in mind, um, Play 2 United need to do much to catch up with them. Now, let's go back to that table. we we'll look at the next story, even though we quickly look at the way the table is right now, uh, talking about the MPFL. Kano Pillars, they are 16 on the log with 23 points. Now, we're going to be looking at this particular story because Kano Pillars against Katsina United generated, generated a, a lot of issues there. That's Katsina United uh, uh, football uh, uh, team bo uh, boss being vandalized by uh, some fans. Uh, well, right now, that's uh, a, a, big, a big story there because LMC uh, banished uh, Canopilas to Abuja. Uh, now, we, we just have to really look at those verdicts. LMC slammed 9 million Naira fines on Canopilas for breaches of MPFL rules, banished club to MQ uh, Stadium Abuja, three points deducted from already accrued points. Banned Sunny Abacha Stadium Cano, uh, uh, Cano from hosting MPFL games forthwith. Canopilas to repair or replace damaged Katsina United FC team balls. Inconclusive game to be continued or replayed in Abuja. Three points deducted from already accrued points. Another three point deduction suspended till end of the season in case of further uh, breach. Looking at this, uh, that we have. That's the LMC, the league management company, the body that administer the rules and regulation governing our football in the league. Verdict on Kano Pillars. Kano Pillars Katsina. Funny enough, Katsina hosted Kano Pillars for some time. That was no issue. Now that they give them the chance, okay, go and play in your own home, then you attack the same thing that have hosted you for a while. Um, uh, Kano Pillars issue uh, has been home for a very long time. Hmm. Uh, recall what happened in the, what we call super heat in Lagos where uh, irate fans of Canopilla were seen with cutlasses and their uh, battles on the pitch of play uh, during the Super 4, uh, when they were unable to make the top four that time. Having said that, oh, for the past two years, Canopilla has not played at the Sony Abacha Stadium, and that raised some concern. They have been playing in Kaduna, and till now, within that moment, they, they left Kaduna just because of fans for Katsina. And when they were finally returned, the first match in two years 
see what is happening now. I think this. they need to, the, the, the LMC armor need to be more steven on them. So as for the fans, as well as the team to buckle up so that whenever they are returning to, to the same venue, they are going to uh, behave or curtail the, the, the irate fans very well. Canopilla has done, they did it in Lagos, they did it in uh, Ibadan, they did it in uh, Port Harcourt, and it's becoming worrisome. And I mm. think they need to need this uh, uh, as soon as, uh, as possible so that uh, um, all this can be put to rest. Okay, now, Joel Ajayi, your take on this particular incident. I think uh, Canopilla is going from fry pan to fire. Because, uh, like my colleague did said, this is uh, after you served the band for two years, and then the first game you are playing at that particular uh, stadium, you are causing this kind of uh, scene that is not uh, smelling well for the, for the development of our league. I think uh, beyond what my brother just said here, that uh, we should have, we should have a, a, a better punishment for uh, Canopilla. While we are looking at uh, giving them a better punishment, we should look at uh, most of the club in the country to try as much as possible to sensitize their, 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 their fans because it's becoming something else. Like six or seven or eight years ago, I refused to be watching a Canopilla game because once you are playing in their, in their soil, if the goal is, does not come to, to like 80 minutes, believe that your life is not safe. And then if we continue like this, where are we going to end our league? Because people are watching. Look at the damage now. Nine million era. You are going to repair your stadium yourself. Whether you like it or not, you will repair it because many things have been damaged. And then you are going to replace or buy another one, another boss for the, for the Castina United. If you look at all this, uh, uh, the money involved, if you inject that money into sensitization of the, of the fans, especially Canopilla, to be sincere with ourselves, many, many venues, you go to that venue, they, they should know that football is about lose or win. Mm -hmm. Whether if you lose today, you work hard to ensure that you win the next game. It's not about do or die affair. But for me, there should be, I, I am just appealing to LMC too, there should be a need for you to sensitize your, star, your fans in mm -hmm. order not to be creating this kind of uh, scene in our league. Well, we just hope that uh, fans out there will be able to listen to all of this because it's not too good for our football. What happened between Kano Pillars and Katsina United? Well, that game will be concluded here in Abuja. Well, right now, LMC actually passed their verdict. They have to be deducted of three points. They pay nine million. They have to be playing Abuja. And three, mil uh, three more points have been suspended because if they don't behave, they will see the dot more point from Kano Pillars point. Well, we've been looking at all these stories. Our time is up. We just have to quickly appreciate our guests in the studio coming for coming. Uh, talking about Niyi Busari, thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. And Joel Ajayi, thanks for her coming on the show. My pleasure. Good one. We just hope that uh, fans out there of any club in Nigeria, top tier, second tier, main uh, stream uh, teams, work on your fans. Sensitize them, let them know it is wrong to always attack people. I am Adeni Ajishafe. Sports is always business and fitness. Thanks for watching.